Hello and welcome to the podcast from Le Monde Diplomatique. My name is George Miller, and in this program, I'm talking about the Yellow Vests movement to Laurent Bonelli, a researcher in political science at the University of Paris Nanterre. Laurent contributed an article to the January edition of the paper entitled Gilets Jaunes Shock the Politicians, and indeed they have. Since this protest movement, without conventional structure, leadership or party affiliation, sprang up in November last year in reaction to fuel price rises, French politicians have been caught on the hop, surprised, shocked, worried. The movement is decentralised, local, unpredictable. In addition to fuel price protests, it has campaigned for better housing and improved public services. Some concessions have been won from the government, but now well into February, the movement shows no sign of fizzling out. Sometimes it has found itself in clashes with the police, who have used flashballs and tear gas against demonstrators. That was the case on a landmark day of protest in central Paris on Saturday the 1st of December. When I spoke to Laurent Bonelli at the end of January, I began by asking him about the significance of that day in the Gilets Jaunes history. Yeah, I think it was a key date for a simple reason, but uh, you know that France is a very centralized country. So that means that uh, if you want to talk with the government, if you want to uh, to be here, uh, you have to do something in Paris. Okay, so uh, most of people, have, the, the mobilization, I repeat, is a very local, it's, it's, it's a very local mobilization. People are mobilized in their city, in their small towns. Etc. So, uh, what happened uh, at the first of December and a week later is people come to Paris to make a demonstration, and here it was a, a huge demonstration, and a lot of them were huge demonstrations, but they are diff- they are very different of a traditional mobilizations and protests because when you have a trade union organiz- organizing a demonstration, of course it's. Uh, the regulation is very strong. Okay, you have for police and know uh, what where, where you will go. Uh, you you know you know everything. But here, people are coming to Paris and go. We are going to the Elysee and we will, we want to see Macron. So they they come in car and by train and they are in the in the city in the streets and with small groups. And these small groups uh, have uh, began to uh, occupy, in a certain way, the capital. And it was amazing, for, 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 of course, for the government and for the police. And here, in fa- facing this new kind of demonstration, the police uh, has been brutal. So the police brutality has been terrible. They have uh, used gas, uh, they have used uh, flashballs, they have used a lot of, uh, of tools. And in the relationship between uh, this uh, mobilization of, uh, of people coming here because we wanted to talk to Macron and the police violence, because there was a lot of unrest in Paris uh, with c- c- car burning and so on so, so and so far. Can you say a little bit about what the, the reaction of the politicians has been, the response? I mean, we said at the start they've been surprised by the Gilets Jaunes arising in the first place. How have they sort of reacted officially to the movement? Mainly at the beginning of December, uh, I think they, they have been frightened by the movement. The fear of the government was obvious because, for instance, uh, the 1st of December and the 8th of December, also Macron was in the Elysee, protected by hundreds of uh, policemen with an helicopter in a backyard, in, just in case, if he had to flew. You know, it's, uh, it's very interesting because it, it seems uh, Latin, uh, it's, it's in the capital in Latin America, so it's, it's it's quite funny, you know. So they are, they have been frightened, and after that they have tried to um, to quit credit to the movement, saying that the, the movement was manipulated by the uh, far left movements or by far right movements, by far right extremists. So uh, it was not spontaneous. It was not about real people, but it was uh, it was a manipulation by the, uh, the by extremists. They have tried to do that, but it's, of course it's not the case. It's of course you have people uh, belonging to these kind of groups involved in the movement. They, they, have, they are not the movement. The, main of, the majority of the movement is people coming with, with no uh, political background. So the majority of French people support very strongly the movement. Of course, you, you have violence and people are condemning violence, but still people 
is supporting uh, the, the movement very strongly. So after, the, after that, they have had to negotiate in a certain way something because uh, yeah, there is a balance in, inside the government because with people with a very uh, rough discourse against the movement, uh, a very with where well, you can you can you can understand there is a kind of uh, uh, social racism against uh, these normal people saying that uh, they are they are nothing. For instance, uh, when the president uh, the president say that these people is nothing, uh, they, they don't want uh, to make efforts. They they are they are lazy guys, etc. etc. Also, uh, a, a very very strong social racism. And on the other hand, they have had to negotiate and to access to some of the revendications of the Gilets Jaunes. So like uh, more money at the end of the, of the month and something like that. So it, it's, it's interesting because uh, it's one of the last social movements in France uh, which have succeeded in its revendications. Not in all revendications, of course, but in some of, one, of, some of them, at least. Now that there have been some concessions from the government... Is the movement losing energy, or is it gaining energy, or is it maintaining energy? Where, where, how do you, how do you see it now, sort of two months on from the first big demonstrations? I think it's very difficult to uh, to predict the future. But in fact, during uh, the Christmas uh, holidays, the movement seemed to, to to lose energy. But after that, he has gained a new uh, energy. So the mobilization at the beginning of January was stronger, but they were at the end, they were at the end of December. So I think the nature, the real nature of the movement, which is not, uh, as, as I said before, a, a political organization or trade union, means that this kind of movement can cannot lose. It cannot lose in, in, in a certain way. It, it, that means that it will last in some, in some places. Uh, I have said that the mobilization is very local. That means that you have local places where the mobilization remains very strong, or stay very strong, and other places which it, it, it has disappeared. But People during these two months have talked a lot of politics and uh, of their uh, real life and what we are living in their uh, daily lives. And I think that means that very easily the movement can disappear in a certain place and reappear two weeks later. So for the moment, the movement is still active. You have, you have mobilization all Saturdays. You have a mobilization everywhere in France. Uh, it's still active. I was in, in the small cities in France. You, you have people here still mobilized. I don't know what will happen after that because you have new reforms of uh, the pension system, for instance, of the public service uh, in the next weeks. So maybe something will happen there because uh, you will have a strong mobilization of trade unions in, the, in this way and it's possible that the two movements uh, find a way to, uh, to join, mm. maybe. And that, that could potentially be very powerful, couldn't it? Of course it, it could be because for the moment trade unions have failed and, politi- and traditional political parties have failed to join the movement. And there is an, a strong difference. A lot of people belonging to trade unions have participated to the uh, Gelosian movement. They have a lot of talks. They have uh, very good dialogue, but not at the level of uh, the organization itself. And for the political parties, they, they remain uh, outside the mobilization because uh, most of the uh, Gilets Jaunes are saying we, do, we don't want uh, to be politi- politicized or we don't want to be associated to uh, this party or that party. So um, I think it's interesting because uh, you have as a background also uh, a kind of uh, how polit- traditional political parties have lost a big part of their legitimacy. Yes, yes. Of course, because because they are they are linked to a transformation of the system, they are linked to a transformation of capitalism that have accompanied it. So um, most of people uh, do not belong in themselves. Uh, they are saying they are they are professional of politics. Uh, they they don't care about us. Uh, the only thing that they want is to be reelected, etc., etc. You, 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 I think you you, yes. you know this, yes. this discourse in, in Britain. Yes. It's very strong sure. also. Yes. So, but but uh, I think it's everywhere. Uh, it's everywhere the same thing in in Europe. So. Uh, I think uh, the, the, the all political parties linked to the to the capitalism of the uh, 70s main, mainly today are, are losing credibility, are losing legitimacy. And you know, what is interesting here is that you have uh, these people are saying they, they they don't want to be politicized or they don't belong to political parties, but they are doing politics. 
they are doing politically in a, in a very strong uh, sense uh, of the word. And although Macron started his own political party, he very much came from the elite, he very much came from a class, the political class, of the, exactly the same sort as all the politicians who came before him. So he seems to be a particular target, you know, perhaps because he he talks for the kind of people that the Gilets Jaunes, you know, feel are doing well in France when they're suffering economically. Mm-hmm. Um, you're right. Uh, Macron is more than a politician. He belongs uh, totally to the elite. He, he, he's an ex-banker. He comes from the bank system. So what, what is very strong in, in, in the Gilets Jaunes movement is this is idea that there is a huge gap and there is an increasing gap between the people and the elites, something which can help to understand what the, the movement is. In fact, uh, I, I have uh, talked in, a, in the paper, in the article about uh, Barrington Moore and yes. his book Injustice, yes. which is uh, interesting because uh, the, he, he's, um, Barrington Moore is a, he's a political scientist from uh, the United States, an American political scientist, and his question uh, during the, the mobilization of the 70s was well, not what, why people rebel, but he substitutes it to this question, the, the question why people do not rebel more often. And, 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 I, and I think that was a very interesting question because when people are saying that uh, it's uh, the mobilization is caused by domination, by uh, by racial domination, by economic domination, etc., uh, Barrington said, but yeah, but it's... <laughs> It exists every time and everywhere, and it doesn't. It does not cause mobilization necessarily. So they are. They are. Of course, they are conditions. They are maybe. Uh, they are necessary conditions, but they didn't. It's not a, a causal. Uh, it's not a causal explanation in certain way. So um, what is very interesting in, in the, the more perspective, it says that it said that um, the mobilization is uh, occurs when. The implicit social contract between elites and the people uh, is uh, broken. Well, and by that he means that people accept domination. Of course, they do. They accept domination, but uh, the domination to be to gain legitimacy, to have legitimacy, well, you don't have domination without legitimacy. So if if a domination is not uh, has no legitimacy, it does not work. So the legitimacy came from the counterparts that the elites give to the people some protection, something like that. And he shows very well that you have some transformation of the economic system, for instance, due to the technology or something like that. We, very often, people try to renegotiate uh, the counterparts, okay? And if they do that, uh, if you don't have counterparts, the elites appear to be a parasitic class, and they lose their ultimacy. And in France, it's very interesting because, but it's not only in France, in fact, I think it's in Europe, and I think the, the Brexit is also a very clear demonstration or, explain, or example of, of uh, this feeling, is that you have in a certain way uh, uh, the elites linked to global cities, okay, uh, linked to the global capital, uh, which are able to travel all around the world and the rest of the country, which is nothing, which doesn't count for nothing. In this gap, of course, it's a symbolic gap in a certain way, but not only a symbolic gap, it's a real gap because uh, the interesting jobs are inside the metropolis and uh, the rest of the, of the cities are losing jobs and the jobs that you are are more precarious, and etc. And in France, it's uh, for him to, to, to explain the, what, what, what is at stake with uh, the Gilets Jaunes movement. Uh, one fact is interesting is during the 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, the public service have served to to protect people against uh, social inequality. So, in a, in a certain way, of course, you had a lot of social inequalities and economic inequalities, but the state was trying to protect people and to uh, to give some counterparts. We can analyze now. It's for 20, 25 years now. Uh, there is a lot of uh, neoliberal policies. Uh, we try to reform the state, as they say, and uh, reform the state means less public service for, for people. In France, it's very interesting. If you if you take the train system, for instance, you have huge TGV, TGV, uh, which you have uh, trains there with high velocity between the metropolis with uh, very good standards uh, for everything. And you have trains between the small cities. So we are, are trained like at the end of the 19th century. 
In the same way, you have a gap between a university of a metropolis and a university in a small city or an hospital, etc. So you have a two kind of public service. One public service for people connected to modernity and connected to the global capital and a public service of second class for people living everywhere. And I think in, in this movement, in this situation, which is a real situation of people, people, it, 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 it's not only about, about the imagination. This is, we are talking about the concrete diary life of people. They are living that every day in their lives. So here, the, the elites have lost their legitimacy, and, and, and that's the point interesting, uh, member of the state and uh, the elites of the state have joined the economic elites in the idea that they are belonging to a parasitic class. And you, you see that, I mean, you mentioned Macron being a, a former banker, and you see that when politicians leave office and then they go and take a well-paid consultancy with a, with a financial firm, or they're, they're very much part of, of the same world. And the Gilets Jaunes are very much not part of that world. And I, I thought it was a very, you quoted a very interesting phrase in your article by um, Robert Castel, um, which is the destabilization of the stable. So people who have who have jobs, who have had a degree of stability in the past, feel that that stability is being removed. Of course, which is one of the main, uh, I think one of the main effects of the, uh, the, the new development of capitalism, of a global capitalism, is that you have, you have, of course, every time you have people, you have poor people. We have uh, outside jobs, living in poor conditions, of course. But, and of course, they remain. You have, you have a lot of people like that. But you have also people which were before protected by their status with salaries, with jobs, uh, everything. Very often, outside of politics, because they are saying, okay, I'm, I, I'm living my life. Uh, let me alone. I, I want to live my life, and that's it. Okay, but yeah, now you have a lot of people who are not able to do it anymore. So uh, when... Before that, they, they, they can do that, something, buy a house or do, 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 do living their life in, in a simple way. They are not a- able to do it anymore because you have more taxes, because everything is ex- more expensive and because the public service uh, is disappearing for them. So that means that uh, your transports are costing more. It's interesting that the beginning of the Gilets Jaunes movement um, is linked to uh, the price of gasoline. Why? Why? Because that means that if you're living in a small town or in the countryside in France, if you don't have any public transport, if you don't have public service for transportation, you need a car. If you have to pay 100 uh, euros more by month, you have a lot of people which cannot do that. They cannot do that. They cannot afford that. So here, your life is changing for 100 euros. Of course, if you're a banker, uh, you, you don't understand that because you do not understand what 100 euro means. Okay, for you, it's, it's the price of your dinner. So you don't, you don't understand that why people will mobilize for that. But I think this uh, destabilization of a stable stables in, in France, is, is, it's very interesting. It's a, I think it's a very important movement to understand what is at stake at the political level and at the social level. I mean, you mentioned the TGV and, and, and transport, Laurent. There's a, there's a famous quote from Macron where he says, a station is a place where you, pa- you pass people who are succeeding and people who are nothing. And that's a very, that's a very shocking kind of um, exemplification of what you've just been saying. It's a view from the political class that there are losers and there are winners. And he, you know, he's clearly identifying with the winners, the people who are going places, who have jobs, who have money, who are mobile, rather than the people who are worrying about how to put gasoline in the car. Of course, and I think, yeah, of course, it's very shocking. He's president of a republic, you know, that's, that's, it's not a conversation in a cafe, you know, it's, it's, he's, he's a president. So, so yeah, yeah, here you can, you can, you can feel the social racism of, uh, of, uh, of uh, most of our allies today because they are, it's, they're very strong, uh, um, feel contempt for, 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 for Gilets Jaunes and for most of, most of the people. But I, I, in fact, I think, yeah, it's, it's, this this uh, formula is very interesting because uh, it, it reveals what is at stake in the transformation of, of public service in our society. Of course, for Macron, people which are the winners, of course, are people connected to modernity, to co- connected to global capitalism, and the rest they count for nothing. And it's not a good thing when you're saying to people that you have, they are nothing. It's very rough when you're uh, president of the republic saying to you that you are nothing.
before uh, before Macron, Hollande did in certain way the same policies than 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 Hollande. There is a, 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 an important continuity in the policies uh, what we had uh, since uh, the, the mid 90s, I would say. But Hollande was a politician, so he was closely linked to the political system, to uh, the local politicians and something like that. So it's difficult for them to have the same uh, social racism than Macron, for instance, because uh, they know where they are talking, they are talking with local politicians or with local mayors. They know in a certain way how people live. But Macron and the people around him are totally connected to this kind of global capitalism, but they know have contact at all with the rest of society. So for them, the society is that. And for them, of course, the society is going from London to Paris to Amsterdam and to Berlin, and that's it. And the rest of life is only something that you are seeing uh, through the window of a train. Yes. Well, let me, let me ask you finally, Laurent. There are EU elections coming in May. How do you see the Gilets Jaunes movement influencing or playing some part? Or how, how, how do you think that will sort of interreact with the, the EU elections in May? I think it's very difficult to anticipate that because um, most of my <laughs> political science, uh, political scientists like me uh, are failing to, <laughs> to predict the results. So we are very, very, very bad to do that. Mm. We, can, we can do political sociology and understand okay. some movements, yes. but to do very, very bad to predict. I'm not sure that they will have a direct link between the mobilization and uh, the ballot and the elections. Because if people are doing politics today, they are talking about politics, they are doing a lot of, there is a very strong movement of politization of people. I think it's very interesting. It doesn't mean at all that uh, people will transform this politization like that in a vote at, uh, for the uh, European elections. European elections, which are election of something of a, a very for a parliament which few powers, uh, very very abstract in the concrete life of people. Of course, if you, if you ask for people living in the countryside in France, what means what are the European Parliament is doing? You know, people will say, I don't know, and I have no idea because uh, in, in in fact the power that that, that, that have a, what is one. Of um, something interesting in the movement of uh, Gilets Jaunes is, uh, of course, uh, the decisions taken in Brussels have a lot of effects, of, of a lot of consequences in France. Many things that Gilets Jaunes are fighting against come from uh, European European laws, European directives, etc., etc. So that means that a lot of things are a consequence of what is done at the European level. But they don't try to talk to European level. They try to talk to their political representative. They want to talk to Macron, to the president of the republic. They are trying to talk to the MPs, etc. So it remains at a very local level. So to transform immobilization at European level through the elections, I think it's, and I'm not sure that it will happen. So you can have a very paradoxic effect in a certain way. You can have, for instance, right parties, which will gain a lot of votes because it will be it, it could be a vote uh, in favor of order. We want law and order, so we will have uh, a, a very strong vote for the right parties and for Macron, for instance. You can have something like that, and people mobilized in the Gilets Jaunes movement won't go to vote because one of the effects of uh, the transformations that we have uh, with uh, global capitalism and its social effects uh, at the national level is that you have more and more people which don't vote. You have a very increasing uh, level of abstention everywhere in Europe. That means that people, uh, if you don't want, if you don't believe in the capacity of politics to change your life, you won't go. If you're saying, okay, it's the same, okay, we have Sarkozy and after that we have Hollande, after that we have Macron and it's, it's all the same for us, of course you won't, you won't believe, you won't go to vote because you think it's useless. So if you don't believe in the capacity of politics to change your life, you won't vote. So my guess is that a lot of people mobilized uh, in the movement of Gilets Jaunes won't go to vote or will vote for, for political party they vote, they vote before. You're saying it's going to be yeah. hard to interpret. I think it will be hard to interpret, but, of course, uh, some uh, journalists and so uh, political scientists will do that, saying <laughs> that, okay, uh, that yes. everything is okay. And 
it will be very difficult to interpret, but you will have a huge battle to interpret the things yes. uh, in a way uh, positive for the government yes. and the system. I was talking to Laurent Benelli about his article Gilets jaunes shock the politicians, which is in the January 2019 edition of Le Monde Diplomatique. It's available in the print edition and on the website at mondediplo.com. If you're a subscriber, you can read the current issue online and access a complete archive of the paper going back over 20 years, as well as exploring other resources such as maps, images, the podcast archive and online exclusive content. And if you're not yet a subscriber, there's plenty of content online to entice you to become one and full details on how to go about it. In the words of the late John Berger, why read LMD? To make sense of what's happening in the world behind the misinformation. I hope you'll join me again soon for another interview with one of our contributors. And until then, thank you very much for listening, and goodbye.